Hey, welcome to the Father's House. Today is going to be an awesome Sunday here at church. Thank you for joining us. My name is Josh. I get to be one of the pastors here on staff. My name is Carrie. I am the group's pastor over at the Chilat campus. It's great to be with you guys this morning. Hey, every single week we like to start our Sunday with something good. So Carrie, can you please tell us something good? Yes. Uh, So uh, some of you may have seen this on social media. We have an incredible woman over at the Greece campus. Her name is Linda, and she's been struggling with some health issues lately. And yesterday, the Greece guest experience team rallied together to do a parade and just celebrate her in the lawn while social distancing saying they made posters and it's just a great reminder that uh, in in the middle of everyday life we can all bring a little something good to those around us Linda we love you we're praying for you and we're cheering you on haven't the drop-offs and the drive-by things been so cool that's been like one of the yes. coolest parts of this whole thing yes yeah, I love very that. fun uh, we also want to highlight the fact that we were able to give away 248 food bags this past week at our life center which has just been an awesome experience that we've been able to have as a church and you can drop off uh, bags uh, for us to give away to people in need in the city at our 692 uh, prayer chapel. It's at 692 Paul Road. You can drop it off Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and you can help us make a huge impact in our city through the Life Center. And now, Carrie, you are the group's pastor, so uh, what are some awesome things happening in the group's world? Yeah, so uh, this past week, we had our very first Art of Marriage since all of this has started. We had couples from uh, three different states in our country join together to grow and invest in their marriage. We have another uh, Art of Marriage group uh, coming up, so you can sign up for that by going to tfhny.org backslash groups. Uh, Just a reminder that there's nothing more worth your investment and time than your marriage. Uh, So go ahead, and uh, if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and sign up. That is awesome. And we just want to remind you of a couple other things that are happening at church today. If you have kids in your house, we have a kids service uh, specifically for them. It's on our church online website. You can actually find a kid's experience. They can have their own device and actually watch church for them. It's actually an awesome experience. My kids watch it every day. They love it. They always have stories uh, about what they learned at church on Sundays, which is really an awesome Epic thing. Epic dance parties. Awesome dance parties in the Jansen house each and every week. And youth has a bunch of stuff going on, Carrie, doesn't it? Yeah. So uh, if you are a student, you can uh, jump on Instagram. It's TFH Youth. They do daily devotionals. There are even youth uh, small groups. So if you're looking just for other students to talk to, uh, this is a great way to get to know other people. You can hop on Instagram and they will get you connected. Awesome. And then last thing before we jump into service today, we just want to remind you, if you are watching on Facebook, you can actually switch over to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash TFHNY. There's an awesome viewing experience on YouTube and also our website, tfhny.org slash watch. They are awesome viewing experiences that you can enjoy, or you can hang out on Facebook as well. We're not trying to kick you off Facebook, but there are two other awesome viewing experiences. But YouTube is lit. YouTube is lit. Also, make sure you share the stream today. Help our reach go wide. We have people all over the country watching the Father's House. We love to see it, so keep sharing the stream. Share it on the online church. It's in the bottom left-hand corner. You can share, but today's going to be awesome. Pastor Pierre has an awesome message that is sure to impact your life today. There's ways that you're going to be able to get involved today. We're which we're really excited about. We'll talk about that soon. But church, sit back. Hopefully you find yourself in a comfortable spot in your house with your family. Get a notepad and pen out. Get ready to take some notes. It is going to be an awesome experience at church today.
days may be darkest, but your light is greater. You light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, you're rising higher with power to save, with power to save. Well, good morning, church. At this time, we are going to celebrate uh, some amazing prayers answered uh, that have been happening in your lives. We want to celebrate that baby Maverick is doing well after a trip to the emergency department last night. Uh, if you saw any of the videos, he's doing so great. We also want to celebrate uh, all of our 2020 graduates, uh, those uh, graduating from high school and from college. I'm sure this looks a little bit different from what you were expecting, but we want you to know that we're so proud of you and for what is in your future. Lastly, we want to celebrate that yesterday was Armed Forces uh, Armed Forces Day. So a huge, um, just honoring moment to all those who have served and who are serving our community with uh, their lives. Uh, we see you, we honor you, and we celebrate you. Right now, we're going to uh, shift postures and begin praying for some of the needs in our church. And before we do that, 
Uh, I was thinking right before this about how there's a story in the Bible where a man is sick and his friends hear that Jesus is teaching nearby and they bring him and they can't get in. So they actually carry their sick friend to the top of a roof and they cut a hole and they lower him in. They will do anything to get him close to Jesus. And and that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to pray uh, for Joe, who was recently in a car accident and needs prayers for healing. He has a fracture in his neck. We're going to pray for Meredith, who's asking for prayers in her uh, financial freedom, journey of financial freedom. We're going to pray for Jen, who is... Uh, asking for hope in the midst of struggling with fertility. And lastly, Carrie Robinson, who had surgery this past week. Uh, Prayers for continued healing. Would you join me? Father, we lift all of these prayer requests and needs up to you, those mentioned and unmentioned. God, those who are struggling with their physical health, we thank you that they are covered from the top of their head to the tip of their toes with the blood of Jesus. God, we bring every person before you who's struggling with oppression and depression and anxiety and just this feeling of hopelessness. We thank you, God, uh, that you call our bodies your, your temple, that you are God Emmanuel in our midst, that in our places of deepest pain and trauma. God, I thank you that that is the place where hope begins to swell and it's by your Holy Spirit. And lastly, God, we just pray for every person who uh, feels at the end of themselves. uh, Maybe they lost their job. Maybe they've lost family members. They're just struggling with grief and uncertainty. We thank you, God, that you are by their side, that according to Isaiah 58, verse 8, it says that the God, the living God, the God of our angel armies goes before them and makes a way. So we thank you, Jesus, that we can lift our hands in a posture of surrender. You hold all of these things in your hand. We pray these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free.
Well, good morning, church. I'm so glad that we get to be together, not only here in the city of Rochester, state of New York, uh, the good old U.S. of A, but all across the world, we get to gather together. Physical distance cannot separate us. And I'm so grateful. I want to uh, welcome uh, some specific people. The Padillas are online, the Ayatza fam from Tennessee, the Finches, Carlene and Gavin, the Custises, Alex Piper, Kristen Davis, the Torreses, Spencer Argena. So glad to hear about your nephew, Maverick, doing well. A uh, couple of my favorite usernames online right now in the chat. Squeaky. So glad you're here. Tootie McCutie. Um, and mm, I don't know if that was long enough. There's a lot of M's in that username. So glad that we get to be together. We get to be the church. Many of us are gathering throughout the week from way, right where we are uh, to be online in community through groups. I want to encourage you to get into a group. It is life giving and God desires for you to give life by participating in some of those small groups. A lot of things going on in youth and kids and all kinds of places. And you know, uh, this past Friday, our governor in New York State began moving us through the phases of reopening New York State and within the state in different regions. All kinds of information going around and some of it seems to be conflicting from different news sources and all those kinds of things. But what does that mean for us as a church? What does it mean for us to reopen our physical locations? When will that happen? How will that happen? Well, actually, we desire to know what our church thinks and feels in regards to that. So later this afternoon, we want to send out a survey to all of those that are in our small groups, on our serve teams, give to this uh, church. And for those of you out there that say maybe in the last few weeks, you know what, I think this is my church. I think this is my, my spiritual home. Uh, we want to hear from you. So it's really easy to be added to the list that we're going to send that survey to. Just text TFH survey, all one word to 94000. That'll add you to the list. And in a couple hours, we're going to send that survey out to you. How are you feeling and thinking towards re-gathering together in our physical locations? What could that look like? We've got some great questions for you, and we need to hear from you. Now, I just want to thank and acknowledge those that are keeping the fires burning in the local church. You know, my wife and I were uh, thinking and looking at our finances and just projecting for the summer and potential family vacations and what this could look like and some financial goals we have. And I just began thinking about investments, whether it's retirement investments or it's college investments for my kids or whatever it may be. And I was reminded that the best ROI, the best return on investment for us as a household, and it's outlaid in scripture, is investing in the local church, the bride of Christ, because it's the church that Jesus came to die for, to set free, and to give a mission. And I'm so grateful that regardless of uncertainty and storms of life, and when life hands us lemons, we as the church, we are further convinced than ever that the mission of Jesus has to go forward. And ordinary people like you and I, we get to fund that mission. Maybe you've never given before. I want to challenge you and encourage you to invest in something eternal in the local church. There's lots of different ways to give that you're going to see. All of them are secure, whatever works best for you. I'm going to pray for us, and then I want to show you a short little video on a really simple and very secure way that you can give and invest in the local church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are a faithful God. You're a good, good Father. God, we honor you with our giving. We thank you that the kingdom of heaven has a great ROI, that the return on investment to what we give, God, it is blessing many, many people. So thank you that we get to count ourselves with the contributors as we give to you today. We honor you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. So excited that you are with us right now. I would love to welcome those who are joining us from New York, uh, from New Jersey, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Georgia, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio, Virginia, Texas, Arizona, New Hampshire, South Salvador, California, South Africa, and Tennessee. Let me just get um, uh, the people on Instagram into this moment here with us. Um, how, how exciting we are. We are surrounded by so many great options so, and so many great connections. Listen, today, um, I'm going to need you to stay with me because I would love for you to participate in this. I'm going to be asking you some questions and asking you to respond in the chat, chat box. And then I'm going to poll, and it's different from what Luke just spoke about. Um, I'm going to ask how this message is resonating with you. And the way that you can do it when we get there is for you to text the word Father's House, one word, right? Is it Father's House 794? Father's House 794 333 Again, the word is Father's House 794 333 And you can do it right now because we're going to send you a link. And then that link will give you an option to vote um, and you're like, what am I voting about? Oh, oh you're going to see. That's where the message is going to go today. And then I also want to remind you that this coming Wednesday, I will be interviewing our own Mayor Lovely Warren, um, having some conversation with her about her journey of faith and the state of our city. And it's going to be really, really amazing. So a Wednesday night live, and we're going to be chatting to Mayor Lovely Warren. But here we are today, and I believe... Uh, that the message that I have for you is going to be meaningful. And I know the temptation is always the sun is out. Uh, I can do this again. But I, I really believe the Lord is, has given me something uh, speaking to our heart in this season. You see, because these lemons are not standing here for no reason. Because about eight weeks ago, uh, life handed us a whole bag of lemons. We didn't ask for it. We didn't know what to do with it. Uh, but we know that things are changing around us. But as we go into a next level here of, of partial reopenings and there's so much uncertainty even in this, so much vague, um, we know that as a church family, as believers, that sometimes we've got to take what we have and then we make lemonade. And, and this is the journey of us as a community making lemonade with what we've been given. And that lemonade is not just for us. That lemonade is to nourish the world around us. The other thing that I'm so excited about is finally after eight weeks, I've got a Najee here. He is sitting here social distancing on my left hand side in the basement and somebody said, Pastor P, why are you guys in the basement? Because we heard eight weeks ago we're going to go in total lockdown and we wanted to make sure that we will be able to continue to just speak the word of God to you and, and I'm so excited. Najee, I've missed you. Missed you, missed you because he's such He's such an incredible part of this. I deeply love Anaji and God's calling on his life. And whenever he's around, I preach better. That's just the truth. So, so deeply excited. I'm going to pray for us. Today, you've got to hang out, okay? I will not go long, I promise. But gather your family. Text in that text in poll. Respond with questions. And let's see where the Spirit of God is taking this. And for those who are joining us right now on Instagram, I'm so thrilled. Uh, that you are in this moment here with us. And remember, if you're on Facebook, you can jump over to YouTube. It's a whole different experience. But if you're happy with Facebook, you stay right there or our church platform. But let's pray. Let's um, welcome the Holy Spirit that is always here as a helper to not only help me speak, but help us all to hear. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your grace. Thank you that you love us, that you are mindful. Uh, that in uncertainty, God, we're not wired for uncertainty. But I thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you are the only certain one in certainty and uncertainty. And we love you because your thoughts over us are good thoughts, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You settle the atmosphere around us in our homes, even right here in this moment where I'm sitting. I thank you that I can just fully heal myself to be a voice that speaks on behalf of heaven. May the words, O oh God, be filled with spirit and life. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. So today I want to tell you the story of three stories. As I said, the message is not going to fully conclude, but it's going to ramp up to a conversation that I think this is where we are. So are you ready? Here is the first story. It is a story of three stories. The king of Aram in the book of 2 Kings began to become a, a pestering uh, entity around Israel. King of Aram, strong, warring nation, has become very deliberate because they want to overrun Israel as a nation. And usually they take, kill their strong men, take their women and their children as slaves. And what the king of Aram would do is he, he brought all of his war generals together. And they would begin to plot. How can they invade? And how can they suffocate? How can they paralyze the army of Israel? And they realized the way that we can weaken them is to set up a, a, a ambush. We can begin to annihilate them bit by bit. So they would. Remember, they were a fighting nation. A very strong nation. But something happened. Every single time they would set up these ambushes and these entrapments. By the time they get there, Israel entrapped the ones who wanted to entrap them. They set an ambush for the ambush. And it happened again and again and again. And immediately as a, as a king, you would go like, wait, 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 wait. There is a spy among us. There is a rat among us. And I've got to find out who it is. Because how do they know where we are and what we're going to do? Because it's us in this room. Who else can speak about that, but the one who hears it, he became very incessant, very demonstrative, very threatening. And then one of his generals said, there is a God in Israel that hears the whispers in the king's chamber. And then he tells the prophet in Israel, Elisha, let me read this to you. Second Kings 6.13. Go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so I can send troops to seize him. And the report came back to Elisha, and they say he is in Dotham. Now, this is so important. First of all, you know what I love? That our God hears the whispers in our chambers. That our God hear the cry of our heart in the most intimate places of our lives. Now, Dotham means the place with two wells. Why is that important? Because it speaks of blessing. You see, Israel lived in an arid, desert-like surroundings. And if you have two wells, you're in a place of blessing. Now, this is very important because Elisha was in the place of blessing. Verse 14 said, So one night the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city of blessing where Elijah was. Now, what is so interesting about this whole thing, right? Early, early what they would find in that, is that, the king of, uh, that Elisha Everybody, this is just how it rolls, right? And, and, and so he had this servant by the name of Gehazi, or Gehazi. And his servant, every morning before daybreak, he would wake up and he would go and he would make fire. He would go to the top of the roof to bathe himself and, and, and get, get the food ready and get the day ready because he was there to serve the prophet of God on the mission of God. Now, Gehazi has seen the work of God through the prophet of God. Now, this morning is no different. Uh, early, before, sunset, before sunrise, he got up and he walked to the top of the roof. But there was something different in the atmosphere this morning. You know when deep in your gut, you just feel that something is different. There was a quietness, but it was not a peaceful quietness. It was a pent-up quietness. There was a straight dog that was barking incessantly. Uh, that was not strange, but 
This is a different kind of Bach. This is an aggressive, nervous kind of Bach. So as Gehazi was going onto the roof and the morning sun began to break through the darkness of the day, all of a sudden his eyes began to see as far as he could see that all around him was horses and chariots and soldiers of Aram and they were surrounding the city. Immediately he woke up Elisha. Second Kings chapter 6 13 said this when the servant of God got up early next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Listen, he said, Oh sir, what shall we do now? Now I look for another translation because oh sir, I think is a gentle cry of his heart. Because ultimately, here's where I need you to help me in the chat box. Could you give me some adjectives to use? What, what emotion came to him? Because here, here is the interesting dynamic that he is sitting with. He knows that God is with him. He knows that the God of Israel is with a prophet. He knows that God is a protector. He knows that God is a God who is near. Yet, with his logical eye, with the reality and the factual observation around him, he's surrounded. There is no escaping this. And they are coming for their heads. They are not coming just to visit them. They want them dead. So what emotion, what feeling, what adjective? Listen, I see some of you are writing the word down. Panic, anxious. Let me see. Shock, horrified. I, I wrote this one down, paralyzed with dread. Th those are the emotions of, what am I seeing? God, can you see what I'm seeing? Our lives been threatened because ultimately, my question is this, have you ever experienced a Gehazi moment? You say, Pastor P, what does that mean? That means that you know God is for you. God is with you. God's promise is with you. Yet, all of a sudden in life, you are hemmed in. I love that word, hemmed in. That means you are so hemmed in, you are so surrounded by something that is threatening your well-being, that's threatening your life, that's threatening your existence, that you too, like Gehazi, is saying, Oh my gosh, what am I seeing? There is no escaping this logically. You see, because ultimately... I think that as humans, we often find ourselves in the breaking point of I know what God is, but is He seeing what I am seeing right now? Hold on to that story. Here is the second story. Now, you see, there are two men. These two men were walking back from Jerusalem. It's about seven miles northeast to the road of Emmaus. Now, why are these two men so important then? They are part of our story today. Have you ever heard the scripture in the book of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12, that says, hope defers, make the heart sick. In other words, if you hope and hope and hope and hope and hope, and it's delayed and delayed, your heart becomes ill. You see, because these two men, these two Jewish men, Israeli men, for, for all their life, generation after generation, they've been under the cruel rule of the Roman Empire, which means that the Roman Empire has taxed them. They've been unfair, treated them harshly. Um, they've become lesser citizens because of the Roman occupation over their life. I want to call it a brutal tyranny. But yet, the ancient prophets has said that one day out of the tree and out of the root of Jesse will come a Messiah, a liberator, a king. And he would come and set up the, the kingdom of God and reestablish the throne of David. And he will come with an a, a, a iron rod to rule over the earth. And, and he will liberate his people. He'll be their God and they'll be his people. And then this rabbi Jesus appeared on the, on, on, in the foreground. And this rabbi Jesus, all around him, blind eyes see, deaf ears hear, the lame walk. He resurrects the dead. And constantly he's saying, if you see these signs, the kingdom of heaven is here. 
And as they were walking, they didn't know who it was. A strange man joined them on their journey. Now we know it's Jesus. They didn't. And this is what Scripture says. Luke 24, 17. Then he, Jesus, they didn't know it was him, asked them, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? Look at this, they say. They stopped short. Sadness written all across their faces. In verse 21, it said this. We had hoped he was the Messiah who would come to rescue Israel. Why sadness? You know why sadness? It's because just three days ago, their hope was totally crushed. Because the rabbi Jesus was, was wounded. He was whipped. A crown of thorns on his head. He was led to a hill outside of Israel, outside of Jerusalem. He was crucified. He was buried. It is over. The hope that they were hoping for was not the hope after all. Now, as they were walking, their strides are slower. Their footprints in the dirty dust is deeper. Because you see, friends, hopelessness and despair. I, I wrote this down. Hopelessness is an unbearable weight to carry. If all hope is gone, what do you have? I remember my brother. Uh, he, he lost his first wife to breast cancer. And as I sat with him the day that um, we had the funeral, I said to him, this must have been the hardest day. He says, no. He says, when I lost hope is when she died. I just buried her today. Because hopelessness is an unbearable weight. Now, let me ask you this. Have you experienced ever in your life hopelessness? Where it feels like you wake up with heavy boots. You say, what is heavy boots? There is a book extremely loud and incredibly close where the narrator of this book uses the term heavy boots to describe how he feels when he's sad and distressed. Heavy boots, maybe. Maybe you are walking around with heavy boots at the moment because maybe you, you thought the job that you, that you got would liberate you from the stress of fin financial um, implosion and now you no longer have that job? M maybe it was a relationship that, that you thought this person finally has showed up and they're going to liberate me from loneliness and feeling that I'm not worthy of love. And something happened. It just dissolved. And you were a place of hopelessness, heavy boots yet again. Or maybe the pregnancy test came back for the sixth time. And it's negative. Your arms are still empty. Your womb is crying out for a child. And you are walking around with heavy boots today. You see, maybe... You are where these two men were, just walking slow strides with heavy boots, feeling hopeless. Third story. There was a man who was sitting next to the road. He was a blind beggar. Now, blind and begging in those days were going or went hand in hand. You say, why is that? Because in their limited belief, they believed that if anybody was blind, it was a sign that somebody sinned. It's either the parents sinned or they sinned, and it's not any kind of sin. It's the kind of sin that is so insidious that the curse of God is now on you. And, and they would believe that if you get close to somebody who's cursed by God, that that curse could rub off on you. So not only was this man blind, he was rejected, ejected pushed aside, shunned. He became an outcast. And he would sit next to the road. He would literally sit at the gate of the temple. Now think about it. God was so gracious and kind and he understood as people how we would label people even to this day. And in the, in the Torah and the law of God, it says that no Jew can walk past a beggar and not give him something. God even made provision for the messed up understanding we had and have about life. 
But this is the thing that bothered me so deeply when I went to go walk and pray for the service this morning. Imagine you are sitting at the temple where the God that we worship in that temple declares himself to be a healer and a provider, yet you are blind, begging for alms. You are sitting at the place where the God of the heaven and earth says, I will heal you. I will provide for you. But you're not experiencing that right now. All you experience is the the thundering echo of lonely, shame, forgotten, infirmity. Now what's interesting, so clever was his ears that he could distinguish the walk of a rich man and an ordinary man. Just the texture of the robe of the person walking by him would tell him whether this is fine garment or an ordinary garment. So trained was his ears that he could hear the difference between a Roman citizen and a Jewish citizen. He would know the wealthy to the poor and he knew the sound of the city and he knew the sound of the people. But today as he's sitting next to the road, begging for arms yet again, sitting in his loneliness and shame, there is a different kind of sound in his ear. There is a restless bustling. He can hear many, many, many feet. There is a, the, the, the activity is, 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 is frantic around him. And, and, and his strained ear could not distinguish what is going on because this is not a feast day. And he began to ask those around him, what is going on? What is going on? And they said, oh, Jesus of Nazareth is coming this way. Oh, I love what Scripture says in Luke chapter 18, verse 35, to, uh, around 18, 35 to 43. And Jesus approached Jericho. A blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. I like this blind man. You know why? Because he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, what is so interesting about that? Listen, you only cry out for mercy when you've come to the conclusion you've been condemned. Condemned people cry for mercy. Think about it. In his mind, he has begun to clothe himself with a label of people. And isn't it true that many of you right now have clothed yourself with what has been said about you? You, you, you are the black sheep of the family. You are the, you are the cursed of the family. You, you've been dealt these cards. This is your story. You, you just need to breathe and survive because nothing is going to change. And this guy just cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. And, and what is so strange, the people said to him, quiet down, you're a nuisance. And he would lift his voice and shout even harder, Jesus, son of of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And can I remind you, God never ignores the cry for mercy. Can I say that again? God never ignores the cry of mercy. And in the season, church, my prayer is constantly, God, would you have mercy on all of creation? Would you have mercy? Because we have violated, we have ignored, We've become self-dependent, self-indulging. We have become little uh, meta-gods in our own ways. Jesus, would you have mercy on us? Now in our chat room, I need preaching ad adjectives. What do you think went through his mind? What did he feel when he was sitting there and he knows that the one who's coming by heals the blind eye, deaf ear, the lame walk, or the dead rise. He, he preached about the kingdom of God. What do you think was going through him? Because he has no way to get to Jesus. All he can cry is mercy and hope Jesus would come to him. I see some of the adjectives as abandoned, rejected, lonely, feeling forgotten of God. So here is where the poll comes in, right? Here's my question. We're in a crisis right now, all of us, right across the world as I've been reaching out to pastors in so many nations. We are all on a level, level playing field. Here is my question. Fear, hopelessness, and feeling abandoned in the midst of this crisis. 
Which one describes the emotional state that you have been battling with the most? I want you to go on that poll right now and, and, and vote for me, would you? Would you just say, Pastor P, I think I've been feeling fear more than anything. Or I, I've been feeling the sense of hopelessness as I look at the economy. Because let me, let me tell you, right now in the United States, 1.5 million people have been infected with, a, with this virus. Uh, n close to 90,000 people have died, real people. C can I just say this again? It, it may not have come close to many people's lives, but 90,000 families have lost someone. And most of them did not have the privilege to even go to a wake and an open grave to say their last goodbyes. It, 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 they just know it's over and that person is being buried somewhere. Th think about it. All over the world, 312,000 people have died 14.7% of Americans are unemployed. That is 36 million people filed for employment this last month. Think about it. And many of you are there. What emotion. I'm looking right now at some of you responding. And so far, most of you say, hey, I'm experiencing fear, fear of the unknown. Come on, keep, keep, keep voting in this. Keep, keep texting in that poll because you see the question is this. Where is God in this? And I'm going to say it lies in two words. And I promise you next week, we're going to look at these and expound on it just a little longer. I believe faith and perspective are the two things that are the catalyst to us seeing this different. Because you see, perspective is a particular attitude towards a way of regarding something. It is a point of view. I love how uh, the the, the one dictionary said this, it, it is a shifted gaze. In other words, uh, you look at something different. I see, I see the, the poll just jumped. Many of you are saying, I'm feeling abandoned. 67% of you, um, it's shifting. Um, you, you, the, another one says, it is the art of seeing through a different lens. Another a translate, um, a definition is the capacity to view things in their true relation or relative importance in other words it's it's seeing but looking with different eyes because until we look with different eyes we will defeat our own faith because here is what i want you to to know if i were to ask you in these three stories and i don't assume you know the outcome of these stories and we're going to pick back up on these stories next week in these stories um, was the problem the lack of God's or the absence of God's activity, the absence of His compassion, the absence of His nearness. Can I say that again? Is the problem with these three stories the absence of God's activity or the ab absence of His compassion or the absence of His nearness? Or was the problem with these three people and their perspective that God was active God was even more compassionate and God was closer than they can ever imagine. The polling, as I look at it right now, 53%, 55% says fear, 15% says hopeless, and 30% says I feel abandoned and alone in the midst of this pandemic right now. This is what's going through my mind. Listen, I'm going to read to you a few statements that I think is so beautiful. Uh, it says this, humans see what they want to see. Another author says this, there are things known and there are things unknown and in between are the doors of perception and perspective. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Listen to this one. What we, dis what we see depends mainly on what we are looking for. Oh, I love that. Corrie ten Boom, she was a, a Dutch family, part of a Dutch family during the Holocaust and her family would hide uh, Jewish people inside the wall in their home. Corrie said this, child, you have to learn to see in the right proportions. Learn to see great things great and small things small. Here is my last one. I love this one the most. Ralph Waldo Emerson said this, if the stars should appear but one night every thousand years, how man would marvel and adore. 
think about it. It's so beautiful. What that means is we've become so used to not seeing what is so extraordinary, so magical, so beautiful, that if we were to see it only once in a thousand years, we would take from work, we would put out the blankets on the grass, we would never go to sleep, and we would marvel at creation. Why? Because our perspective have been dulled because we no longer look for the awesomeness. We no longer look for the... We're no longer curious to find that which our eyes have become dim to. So what does that mean for us? I want you to look at me and listen to me. Whether you are living right now with a sense of fear like a haze eye, you feel hemmed in and surrounded. Whether you feel hopeless that the promise of God is not playing out, what he said is not working, or whether you feel like the blind beggar, abandoned and lonely in the midst of this pandemic, this is not where the story ends. Next week, I'm going to take you on this journey to see how this unfolds, because our God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there is a song that has these words. It says this, This will be my song, that you are always good. What does that mean? That means in the midst of being surrounded, in the midst of wearing heavy boots every day, in the midst of crying, have mercy on me, my song will be, that you are good because God I need you to touch my eyes and you will find out next week what happened when he did can I pray for you and then we're going to listen to this beautiful song and I beg you I implore you don't just quickly click off because somehow I believe the Holy Spirit wants to minister to your heart silence the world around you be present in this moment after this prayer give it just five more minutes and let this next song minister to your heart. Father, we are hemmed in. We are surrounded. We are fearful. We are doubtful. We feel a lot of uncertainty, sense of hopelessness, sense of how long before it becomes normal, almost a cry for mercy. Yet, you have not appeared through the crowd. But God, in the midst of it all, all we can say is, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great you are. I will sing that in the midst of it all, O oh God, that you are always good. Thank you for hearing my prayer. I set my eyes on perfect view. You 
What an incredible message and an incredible closing song. Um, this is only part one of a two-part message that Pastor Peer will continue next Sunday um, in this incredible conversation on perspective. A few exciting things to highlight as we look forward to the week. Wednesday night live, Pastor Peer will be interviewing our mayor, uh, Mayor Lovely Warren, um, and to hear about her journey of faith and to hear about just the conversation as we look forward um, to the future and what it holds. So make sure you set a reminder, invite people to Wednesday night live. Um, but today's not done. We're going to continue a conversation in just a little bit in our Behind the Message. Uh, this is a chance for us to kind of sit back and um, just entertain a few questions. And last service, we got to get Josh to sing a song. So maybe he'll do that again. So if you have any questions for us, text 585-502-8981. Um, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. So don't go far. All right, here we are behind the message. Um, super excited to start the conversation. If you're here first service, um, you'll notice we have Carrie this service. Super exciting. And I remember to put shoes on, which is also very exciting. Um, so, Luke, our overlay. Oh, my goodness. There we go. 502-8981. Five, 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 that, eight, eight, that was one. Wes's fault, I believe. Oh. So I take it back. Luke. Luke, Luke, Luke I've got your back, Luke. I saw it. Josh I saw it the whole time. Josh you. For those of you that don't know what they're talking about, it's the message at the bottom of the screen. We yes. don't we don't know what overlays mean. Sorry. Guys. Thank oh, you okay. for thank you for you making are. sure everyone is you on know, the same page. You know. But there we are with the number of five at five five oh two eight nine eight one. Did I do it right? Yes I did. Eight nine eight one. Yeah. No. Nope. Five zero two eight nine eight one. Oh, that's, I don't know why I felt like I was waiting for like six more numbers. <laughs> no, I, I skipped the area code, which Got isn't it. helpful if you're not in Rochester. 585-502-8981. We would love to answer your questions today. Yes, we would. All right. Just as an easy uh, starting question, um, how did you capitalize on the one beautiful day of Rochester weather yesterday? What did you do? Anything fun? What did you do? 
we, yes, we just sat outside and got some really good sunshine, went for a run at Turning Point Park. Oh for those of you gosh. in Rochester, if you uh, don't, if you're Nothing looking to for location. a great place. I love the location. I hate running. I just thought I'd clarify Oh, yeah. It's so my great. Noise. <laughs> There's like a boardwalk over the water. It's just really lovely. Josh? Uh, hung out outside for a little while. Sat there while my kids played, ran around, which was great. I did some yard work, pulled a couple bushes out of our uh, Why did you front. do that? Don't you want those in? Uh, my wife didn't want them in anymore. She oh. wants new ones. So I ripped them out. I ripped them out. It was awesome. Felt From so good. From the roots? Did you? From the roots. I took a shovel. You know, I did the whole thing. It was crazy. Wow. It was well crazy. Well done. Uh, Josh, can you explain to us why we have started the streaming to YouTube? Oh, listen. This is your the, chance. The Make YouTube, the you. So you might be watching us on Facebook right now, which is fine. Okay, love it there. Facebook is like our church sign. You drive by, you see, you're like, that's beautiful. If you want to come inside, you got to go to our website or to YouTube. I promise you, the stream quality on YouTube is going to be way better than what you're currently experiencing on Facebook. So you check it out. The chat experience is also a little, a little better. There's something about Google, they just understand. Uh, they understand it. So check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash T-F-H-N-Y. You'll find our channel. It's a hop in place. You can see all of our content from 2005 to today on YouTube. <laughs> Very passionate. Wow, that was yeah. such a good yeah. sales pitch. That was, that was great. That was I'm great. moving to YouTube. You, get, you call right now, we'll send you two ShamWow. <laughs> <laughs> or you just buy one, we'll cut it in half, one for you, one for your friend. <laughs> Okay, I think everyone has caught up to us. We're getting some great questions that are coming in. Um, and it's kind of related to the poll, which was really fun. Get used to this poll, because it's definitely going to come back. So we're going to have to learn how to do this well together. Because um, we saw many different ways of trying to successfully do the poll. Um, which some were very funny, some were really great. Um, but this poll was talking about like different feelings that we could be feeling in this season. And if I'm remembering correctly, um, hopelessness, feeling of abandonment, and fear. Um, and so there's two questions that came in, and I'm going to kind of tie them together because I feel like um, they're really well interconnected uh, for us to answer. Um, but it's this, it's this tension or the, the conversation between feeling depressed, feeling sad, or feeling uh, certain emotions that feel actually counter what faith should be. Um, so the question is, is it okay to be depressed? Is it mentioned in the Bible? Um, how do we answer the question of faith um, and these things of mental health and emotions that seem to not agree, but yet for many we experience this dichotomy of both existing in our heart? Um, I think that David actually modeled for us really well what living as a human is like, that it's okay to have emotions that feel like they are contradicting our faith. Um, but even even the way we word things, I think, is helpful. So um, instead of saying, you know, I am so, okay, this may, it's going to take, it's going to come back, I promise. But like even I used to be a social worker. So we would help people reframe their language. Instead of saying um, a relative is an addict, we would say, uh, no, your your relative is struggling with addiction. Instead of saying that a person is something they're struggling with, no, that's not your full identity. That is something you're experiencing. And I think that even reframing our language around this helps. Like, I am not depressed. I am experiencing depression. There's just something about that that helps a, a mo an emotion that can feel super overwhelming to not become everything. I guess it would be my Do you want to add to that? No, that's a great answer. That's a really good yeah. answer. I feel like I just want to keep the conversation going because it's such an interesting tension and it, and it plays out in many areas. Cause I remember growing up um, and I've, I've experienced struggling and I'm going to use reframing language of struggling with emotions of anxiety and the, the feeling of depression in different uh, stages of my life and I remember uh, anxiety being a really hard thing to process uh, because peace is so mentioned. It's mentioned in the Bible so many times um, that we read promises of peace and our prince of peace and uh, not a spirit of fear, but of love power, of a sound mind. So a sound mind, but yet here I am, I'm wrestling and I 
something that's been kind of helpful for me is I think um, if we were to be able to run completely on ourselves, uh, we would always run away from God. Um, it's just, it's an, it's a natural inclination because we want to be independent as humans. Um, we saw in Adam and Eve that they wanted to be like God, um, which is why they started to walk off the path. Um, and I think there has to be an anchoring and a tether um, in my life to always keep me dependent on God. And I don't feel like I've ever reached a point where I'm, I can't keep going, but I've reached a place that I go if I don't receive a grace or a mercy that sustains me other than what I'm cr- trying to do on my own, um, then this isn't going to work. And that feeling is the tether that keeps me reliant on God, dependent on God. Um, and I think we all have different tethers uh, that keep us connected to God and mine, I think just happens to be uh, struggling with those those thoughts and those feelings. Um, but I think it, it is, that's like a broad stroke of an answer that I would do for that. Caleb, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that perspective because actually for those of you who were watching on um, the Father's House website, there were a lot of comments about that. Uh, even some of you had said you wish there was a, a fourth option, which was desperation, yeah. feeling desperate. And I think that's such a great point because it does keep us desperate. Uh, we can't do it outside of ourselves. And it makes me think about limits. Um, you know, uh, and, and limits are are such a double-edged sword. Going back to what I had referenced earlier, my brother has autism. And I remember when he was younger, we would talk a lot about, you know, we would help people when they say, oh, your brother's autistic. No, he has autism. And one of the reasons for that is because autism may be one limit, um, but that limits who he is to this one thing. And I think we can do the same thing with God. This, this limitation, whether it be fear or anxiety or depression, I'm not saying those things are from God, but I am saying that those things actually can draw us closer to him if we choose to. And I think if we let shame set in, um, someone said it's like, it's almost like this balancing beam type thing. But if we let shame come in and ruin the scales of our heart and our mind, we think about that. I think we then limit God's ability to use our life as a testimony because I, his desire is to actually always show us through it. But I think our journeys look different because our lives need to reflect different stories for different people who are watching. Um, so I would say don't feel shame when you feel those things, but actually feel encouraged that you've been given the mission to be victorious over this for those who might be feeling the shame. So, I mean, scream it from the rooftops as long as your journey is walking towards what you know God has for you, which is ultimate good. Okay, so sorry. I just have to say one last thing. <laughs> Josh, it just makes me think if you're watching. Um, uh, <laughs> Chloe's laughing. Um, I read this poem and it's called Trust in the Slow Work of God. Mm. And it's all about how we do not, like we always want to arrive on the other side of something, but actually um, resting in the slow work of God. Like who are we to, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Direct? I want to say depict. That's not the right word. To demand from go. God that... Uh, that we, you know, to demand from God that we want to be on the other side of something. Yeah. Actually, he's doing something yeah. in, in the midst of it all. No, that's great. A uh, question came in asking about the survey. We've been mixing survey and poll all day. Polls were in Pierre's message. Survey is the one about uh, what it looks like to gather in physical buildings. Someone asked, what is the number to text to receive the poll that Pastor Luke mentioned before the message? The number is nine four zero 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 ninety four triple zero and maybe the word too ninety four for, for those 000. who are also wondering the word is tfh survey to ninety four thousand and i believe no space no space on tfh survey no sp- not sure if keywords work with spaces but tfh survey all one word to nine four Look at that. zero 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 <laughs> <laughs> tfh survey to one hundred thousand minus six thousand <laughs> <laughs> See how, how many ways We've, we can do this. Yeah, and All you're right. looking over there. Like Ganaji's going to tell you something. Ganaji's whispering the the numbers. All right, we've got to close out. But I feel like it's not fair. Uh, it is very fair. to the second you know what? service Here's crew. The thing. No, 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 no. Why don't you never can read we the mute Bible? his mic? Life is not fair. Er, okay. Yeah, but we choose to try and be fair in our right. in our serving and ministering. 
and your deliverance ministry. Chandler Moore oh commented. My God. This is great. All right. Um, Drop the wait, wait. I got to give context. I got to give context. I got to. Oh, Chloe said, Chloe's at the back at the stairs by the basement. She just said that Chandler Moore commented celebrating. Was he this celebrating? Celebrating Josh's great. work. Get but your context, camera out Josh, and film me. Yeah. We're going to lose your opportunity here. All right, sorry. Second service people don't know what's going on. That's right. First service, Josh sang us a beautiful hymn. Um, but for those tuning in, I feel like you need to experience a hymn by the one and only Josh Jansen. So we are going to do round two. You can't sing the same hymn because we need more content for Instagram later. I got to think of another hymn. Why don't you do some always okay, good? In context for the hymn. context. Yes. This came out of, was it last week? Last week. I did make a big promise. Yes, that, that we would hear a song from Josh. So, Anaji. It's your moment. There he is. Anaji. All right. Thank you, Chandler Moore, for doing this to me. <laughs> I want you to know that everything that Maverick City has done. Because of these right here. What? Vocals. What are you pointing to? My, my it's vocals. My vocals. Oh. I'm like a vocal coach. Is that where it all is? Yeah. All righty. But I need like your music. voice is everything. <laughs> That's part of the problem. <laughs> Great is thy... <clears throat> I, I thought yep. we talked about keys earlier. <laughs> All right. What Ready? key do you normally like All to right. sing that one in? I don't know. All right. Great is thy faithfulness. He's got to find the key. It's not that Great easy. We don't know what note you're singing. thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. New mercies I see. There we go. All I have need. Say it again. Great. Great is thy faith. One more time. Great is thy Now hold it. Hold the note. Faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Round of applause oh, to on. Josh. Oh, All right. Won't he do it? <laughs> won't he, won't do, he it? do it? Don't know come what on. he did. I don't know what you've been going through today, <laughs> but I know that tomorrow's a new day. Speaking of tomorrow, but tomorrow, Monday, and then Tuesday, and Wednesday, Wednesday Night Live. Just one more time for those tuning in. Uh, Wednesday Night Live, we'll be watching in an interview with Pastor Peer with our mayor. That starts at, who can remind me? Seven. Seven. Um, here on Church Online, Facebook, YouTube. Is that every, all the places? Oh, also Josh's album is dropping. <laughs> That was a sneak We're single. also streaming on our Instagram. He's got an EP coming out tomorrow. All right, Father's House <laughs> fam, we love you. We'll see you later.